Dr. Drew is a board-certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. And uh, our guest, who was going to be Vinny Jones from uh, Snatch, cannot make it in tonight. He's uh, fallen ill or his uh, schedule will not uh, permit it. I don't know what the uh, deal is. As you know, though, Drew, I'm one of the few talk show hosts in America who does not like guests, and I'm fine when no one shows up. You usually lean into them a little bit, though, when they don't show. Don't care. Yeah. Less work for me. That's uh-huh. the way I look at it. Uh-huh. To me, when a guest doesn't show up here at my job, one, it's like... One page of reading you don't have to do. Well, a couple, half a page. I don't read the whole bio page. How dare you? But, no, I, I feel like uh, when I was back in school and I had a substitute teacher. Right. Or we're showing a film during right. one of the classes. Yeah, right. get to relax. Good. It's a weird way to go through life, constantly looking for that little opening to get out. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? The, the Did easy. you go through school that way? Not exactly. You didn't? I got over that about third grade. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus. I was in high school, and uh, if there was a substitute, I'd, o- I'd open the door, and I'd see a strange person standing behind the teacher's desk wearing funky glasses and some bad jeans, and I'd go, oh, my God, ah, light would come up above their head. And it was always, where's Mrs. Parker? I'm filling in for her. Ah, that's great. And uh, uh, For a couple days, a couple weeks? No, just today. Okay, that's good. That's still good. Unfortunately, what happens when you go through the kind of training I had, you realize you, there is no escape. Um, it's just punishment. Here, not here, me. Here it comes. I was, uh, my high school, uh, my, my academic career was sort of the equivalent to uh, what the boxers call the rope-a-dope. Just sort of leaning back and seeing what I could avoid without uh, mounting any offense or putting my hands up. Henry? Oh, hi. Um, You're 21. What's up? Hey, um, just want to say you guys are really great, Adam. You're super funny. Um, Drew, you're really smart, and we, I really appreciate the work that you do. Thank you. Um, kind of nervous here. just want to ask you kind of a simple question. Um, see, I'm a virgin, and I and I and I want to know um, if sex, for the sake of sex alone, is a healthy. It's just healthy. I mean, Doctor Drew, would you agree that sex, by sexual intercourse alone, with no emotional involvement, no emotional investment, which is really what um, what we seem to be looking at society today. Uh, it's that, sort of what God created, what God intended for us, though. But uh, no, I it's. It can be healthy. The problem is that people overdo that. That becomes what sex is to them. And rather than something they can choose or not choose to do, it becomes a way of of maintaining, um, I don't want to use words that are too ridiculous, but I would say homeostasis, so maintaining, man, managing your feelings. Yeah. Sex becomes a way of, of a drug. And uh, that's not healthy. Now, for somebody to have sexual intercourse and not be in love with somebody, nah, that's you know that's well, a personal listen, choice. Guys can pull this off better than women can. But what's your story, Henry? Well, my story is that um, because I seem to have reactions like women do, where um, you know I've I've had a bunch of opportunities to have sex, and I just don't follow through because I just I sometimes feel not an inner voice or anything like that, corny like that, but just I just simply feel like I don't like I can't I can't do it. I mean I. I feel like if I would if I would do it, I would just feel uh-huh. I would just feel like and you know really empty and just and I would just continue doing it like a you know a snowball. Yeah. And so I don't know. I just snowballs uh, when you rape a chick in yeah, the uh, so, Montana woods during winter. <laughs> hey, uh, Henry. Yeah. You gay? No, a lot of people think I am, though. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, all my best friends thought we're living friend, in a democracy, you know, Henry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Let's mean, my put best it to a vote. Said, my best friend said, hey, if you don't have sex soon, you're gay, you know? But, All right. Are you, well, you're gay until proven otherwise. Right, but, but what's I'm not, up I with mean, you? I are you really? I know that I'm not gay. And All I right. Listen, have, listen like, to his idealized his concept. His reasoning, is, his reasoning is, if I have sex once, I'm going to go on some rampage. No. And it will never end. <laughs> all, all guys that are virgins uh, past, let's say, 17, immediately begin weaving together these sets of uh, tales and circumstances. They get very philosophical about getting laid. Henry, are you a religious guy? Um, no, I'm not. I don't even. I don't go to church at all. All right, family, all right. My family's religious, but I don't. Listen, go to don't think so much. Yeah, that's all. All the great humpers weren't great thinkers. 
Right, it but gets I don't want, I don't, in the way. I, in a way, I don't want to be a great humper, though. It's a it's a visceral it's a visceral activity, though. It's a, it's like skydiving. You can't intellectualize it too much. You got to go for it. And, and by the way, if you want to be doing that in the context of a close relationship, why not get a close relationship going? There you go. It, because we see, because I I really maybe it's just my environment or the chances that I get, but it just it just seem like it, it. I don't get any. I don't get. I a think shot the only a most people most people do get that choice. So the only difference between you and it most people is you. Thank you. That goes for all of you, Brian. Yes, you're 23. I am. What's up? Well, I found out uh, last year that I have uh, through a blood test that I have uh, herpes, uh, genital herpes. You well, know, the blood test is fairly useless, but well, uh, that's not an accurate. That's not an accurate way to diagnose herpes. Why yeah. not? Cause it's I'd all like ca- to tell my doctor that because uh, I never had an outbreak. Well, then you probably don't have it. Okay. I mean, the, the only way, this, you should be careful, but the only surefire way to diagnose this is with viral culture, really. Well, I can honestly tell you now that after the scare, I'm going to be careful. Why did, why did they uh, even bother testing you? I mean, they, you know, the accuracy of a test is dependent on the probability of it being positive. In other words, if you have no reason to order a test then the probability of it being false positive is actually higher than being true positive. Well, an, an ex-lover <clears throat> came down with it, a visual diagnosis, and uh, she mm. wanted to determine where she got it. Mm. So she took me. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, and, and it didn't look good for you when it came up positive. Well, not at all, especially when, you know, the people that she suspected at the point at that point damned them and all this, and I said, you know, I don't like that talk because what if it is me? Yeah. And then now I damn me. Yeah. I, I doubt it, but it's it's an interesting situation. It's still left a possibility of being... Here. Well, listen, Brian, if you've never had an outbreak of herpes, she couldn't really blame you for not knowing you had herpes. Which well, is, by the way, very common. Very common. Having herpes and, and not, n- knowing not having an outbreak. Most, most women who have herpes don't know they have it. Okay, but then what about the blood test? Why is this so inaccurate? It's just not a good test. It, it is. Yeah. Why not? It's Why would not, it read not, positive for because, herpes? Because if it's for antibodies to herpes. It's a general... There are other antibody responses to herpes viruses that get picked up. Yeah, that's uh, very fascinating. Well, that wasn't his question, was I, it? I don't know what his question was. Brian? Sorry? So what's the question? Actually, the question that I had was, uh, for the past three and a half weeks, I've had mono. Mm. And that's a virus too, right? Yeah. Is it a herpes virus? Mm, no. Okay. I thought I had read that somewhere online. Is it a herpes-type virus? Uh oh, it's the Epstein Barr virus, typically, or CMV, which I I don't think that's a herpes class. But uh, <clears throat> why? Why would that matter? Well, I was curious if there's any way that they could maybe uh, affect one another. He's, no. look, he's looking for an out. No, what he wants to say to his girlfriend is the reason the blood test came up positive no, is no, because no. he just wants to know if he's going to quite down. Is much, this is much more, much more recent. Okay, but there, there's listen. Plenty of people have herpes. Nothing else occurs to them other than that infection. Nothing about having herpes puts them at risk for anything else. Mike. Mike. Yes, sir. You're 20. What's up? Yeah, I'm. I've been dating this girl, and uh, she is. She's got some weird things that turn her on. She when when we're like having sex or whatever, she likes to call me daddy, and you know, like you know, bang me daddy or whatever. Oh, yeah. And, and, I uh, call my lovers daddy too. Oh, although it's actually my dad I have sex with, oh. so it it fits. I mean, it works. You know, it's no confusion. But, uh, but uh, and also like, what really turns her on is like when we're fooling around and like I call her a little a slut, and she really gets all hot by that. And I'm trying to figure out why that, why does that turn her on? Yeah. Well, does she have any uh, weird energy going on? You, know, she, you know what I mean. Uh, she's pretty normal as far as as far as I know, but like, I mean, she's just with Mike. Day. Well, listen, let, let me tell you. There's two. Uh, in, in my opinion, there's two reasons for girls who like a little naughty talk. One is somebody told them they were naughty, and the second one is is someone told them they were a princess, too perfect, and they're looking yeah. for a little yeah little change up. Now, Drew, you may disagree with this, but most women. Even healthy, adjusted women who come from good environments like a little mm-hmm. bit of a uh, little, little rough trade in the sack sometimes. Some like a little dirty. Being taken, uh, being swept away. Yeah, swept away mm-hmm. by a big magic penis. Mm-hmm. And they like a little little hair tug and a little uh, you love it and a little... I mean, sex is it can, can be a little... Um, 
you regress a little when you have sex. Mm -hmm. You grunt, you sweat, you, you turn into a little bit of a caveman. Yeah. And there's some women who are okay with that. Yeah. So I don't necessarily think it, it's a big deal. No. But if she's crying and yelling, Daddy, and saying, uh, you know, choke me with your belt. And if, by the way, there are other chaotic aspects of how she conducts herself in the relationship. Mike? Yeah, well, she also will, like, call me Daddy, like, when we're not having sex, like, just around the house, you know, just around the house, yeah. whatever. How's her daddy? Um, he's a pretty nice guy, as far as I know. And she's all right with him? Yeah, they, they get along fine. She, does, she doesn't like her mother. But uh, her and her dad seem to have a pretty good relationship. And there, there's no other things that would, uh, no red flags in the relationship? Not that I can see. I just think it's kind of strange. Sometimes she'll slip up and, like, say in front of one of my friends, and they kind of, like, look at me strange or whatever. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but listen. That's just listen. a term of endearment. Yeah. She just, makes some other weird name I'd slip out. Yeah, I like daddy. I like big daddy better instead of a uh, small penis daddy, but... Daddy's fine. Your girlfriend called you monkey nipples once at one of the yeah. Loveline rap parties. Got no problem with that. That was sick. I like that. You know, I'm, uh, I am have sensitive nipples. I don't know if you know that. I like uh. a little nipple play, Drew. Uh. <laughs> Close your eyes and picture me uh. enjoying some nipple play. Uh. Jennifer? Yes? You're uh, 18. What's up? Um, I was wondering if it was um, possible for a 10-year-old to be depressed. Definitely. Okay. Yeah, um, Drew will bring you some pictures why would, <laughs> from uh, when he was 10. What's up? He'll um, show you depression. <laughs> He'll go to his room sometimes and say he wishes he was dead. Um, he just, he's very kind of laid back and he doesn't do the regular 10-year-old boy things. Hmm. It's just a red flag. Something is up. Maybe not depression, but something. Okay. Maybe yeah. nothing. Maybe it's just his constitution, but uh, keep your eyes open. Okay. All right. Well, Drew, you got triplets, and they're all quite different, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got. I have two nephews. One of them is uh, sort of moody and irritable most of the time, and the other one's just a little little teddy bear. Mm -hmm. Same same vagina. That'd be my sister's. Nice. Same penis. That's uh, my brother in law's. Mm -hmm. Is that how you refer to most of your family members? Penis and vagina. Yes. Yeah. Sure. My mom is the big vagina. Yes, right. Okay. And uh, my grandmother's the uh, grand vagina, it's a, a French term, and uh, that means that means big, large scale vagina or the gray vagina we call it. And uh, these kids, these kids are uh, they're a year and a half apart. I, I swear to God, one of them is the moodiest kid in the world. The others, uh, the others, like a uh, it's it's like having a Saint Bernard. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is. Everything's the same. The environment's totally same. Your boys. Very oh, different. Very different. Right? Very different. One of them is very athletic, very outgoing. Yep. The other one dresses like a woman, mm. cries and masturbates. There's a little bit of that in both of them. But sings yeah. torch songs. Yeah. No, one, one of them's like a computer nerd, right? Yeah. There's a different. One, one's rigid and contained and controlling. The other is right? super open. That's and you. Fluid. And then the other one's your wife. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Be nice to have. Too bad you don't have a third so you could find something sort of healthy. In the middle. Yeah, that's what I'm That'd talking nice. about. So what do you do? You try to get, you try to get the one that's real contained out of his shell a little bit, yep. and you try to reel in the one that's wild. Yep. Uh, nice. Yeah, that's good times. One that blow in, that's, that's fluid. I prefer to call him. Plays the piano like a mf. I mean, really? really? Oh. And uh, athletic. They're both pretty athletic. They really are. Well, Doug's the athletic one, right? He's the athletic heart. Jordan is really the athletic. Oh, I see. naturally. Nathan. Yeah. You're 15. What's up? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I've never had, like, a real long-term relationship. Like, never really many relationships whatsoever. Like, I've only had maybe about, like, two or three. And I don't know. It's like, I don't know why. Yeah, you're 15. You're 15. Relax. Yeah. yeah Adam, how many you had by 15? Well, I mean, in, not 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 uh, by fifteen. Yeah, not just the ones you imagined. Yeah, not the no, ones realistically. That, real uh, relationships. Let me see here. Fifteen. I make a tenth grade. I, let me count here. Okay, tenth grade. That's that, a nine. That was, no, hold eight, on. Hold count on. back. That was nineteen seventy nine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was uh, fifteen years old. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. Zero. Zero. Had you yeah. been, had you kissed anyone by 15? I tried to kiss myself. I, other than the, what you did in the I mirror. my back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I had uh, I had one girlfriend, Esty Chilidanko, <laughs> when I was uh, in the seventh grade. I kissed her. I kissed her. Okay. Yes, we, we made out. One. We made time to make out, and uh, then she dumped me. My whole things have changed. And then uh, I uh, had, a, you know, 
You know, the only the only thing worse than a, a, a nice dry run is a little sip of water before that long dry run. Asti was my little uh, sip of water mm-hmm. in uh, the the uh, seventh grade, and then uh, about a about a ten year drought. <clears throat> nice. After that, very nice. Yeah, tough times. And huh. feeling pretty good in the seventh grade. And poor Nathan hasn't had more than three relationships, and he's 15. Imagine that. <laughs> All right, Nathan. Yeah, you're, I, just, you're, yeah. I, just, I think sometimes I get jealous when, you know, when I see like couples at school, I guess. Yeah, it's yeah, understandable. So did Adam. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it, it's, it's okay. It's what you want, and just relax. It, it, oh. it'll, the less desperate you are, the more likely you are to get there. All right. Hey, I also had uh, one more thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you remember about two uh, two years ago, um, a blind girl called? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I'm her brother. <laughs> she called... Uh, well, we've had a few blind yeah. people call. I don't yeah. know if we got into the seeing impaired thing with her or not. I think yeah, she, she was said, the f- first uh, one that did that. She called in and said it was hard for her to meet guys. Right. So, I don't know, she, she has like a boyfriend now. So. Yeah. She's doing okay? Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah she, right, she's good. doing good. Are you, are you sure she's not dating a hat rack and just confused? <laughs> It's an actual human being? Yeah, I have met him. He's a, he's a good guy. Oh, okay. Because so. you know how the blind are. No. And they can't see. They, they're oh, like Mr. can't see. Ma- I'm like, going to make notes here. Blind can't see. Okay, yeah. got it. They're like Mr. Magoo. Yeah. They right. could be dating a hat rack and not know it mm-hmm. for months sometimes. Sean? Sean? Sean, you're 17. Yes. Oh, boy. What's up with you? Nothing. All right. Well, hold on, would you? Okay. All right. Let's talk to Adrian. Yeah. Um. I want to know if listening. Ooh, turn that radio down, you brainiac. All right. You have to hear yourself asking, "What's up with you?" <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's not a good. Didn't you it? never know how mean you are until you hear yourself <laughs> in the background of a fourteen-year-old's bedroom. Yeah, I want to know if you lift weights to feel like stunt your growth. Well, if you do supplements, it can. Uh, it tends to stimulate the closure of the growth plates prematurely. Really? Yeah. When you say supplements, what do you mean? Nah, D, just interesting diet. You mean like beef liver pills? No, no, no. I mean like hormones. And um, it's not great for your joints and growth plates to be lifting, certainly not lifting heavy weights, but just general, you know, there's something up in the 12 rep range where you're not killing yourself with with the heavy weight. It should be fine. All right. So it's okay if I like bench press and stuff? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Carefully. I mean, you, you use appropriate, make sure you're Somebody's instructing you how to do it so you don't hurt yourself, yeah. Do you know if there's any way I could, like, get taller? Um, if there's anything I could do? Start what do you, uh, you should have had your dad marry a marry Swedish woman instead of go. a Mexican woman. Can, can, he go, can he go back and do that? No. No. What's your nationality? Mexican. Yeah. That's a soccer nationality. It's not a basketball nationality. How tall are you? I'm 5'8". Oh, yeah. on, you're 14. That's you're not bad eight. for 14. Adrian, that's like worrying about his penis size. I mean, yeah, you'll, there's something up here. You saying he has a small penis, too? Mm-hmm. Adrian. Yeah. Yeah, you'll be fine. All right. Hey, Adrian. Yeah. Don't do that thing, though, that uh, a lot of guys do, which is they don't get as tall as they like to get, so they get wider than they should be. Okay. And nothing worse than seeing a guy who's uh, five nine and a half and uh, 275 who's still doing uh, tons, you know, he's uh, bench pressing and doing squats and getting even wider. Mm-hmm. All right. S- scares people, you know? Okay. All right, Adrian, you're fine. Thanks. Right. Bye. Good times. <laughs> now, what happened to the guy who was depressed? Did he hang up? He's gone. Yeah. All right. Tyler? Hi. You're 18. So, What's up? Tyler, Texas. Um, No, not Tyler, Texas. Oh, I'm sorry. But you're okay. calling from Texas, right? Yes, I am. What's up there? Um, I guess I'm calling for a little bit of advice. Um, oh. Me and my father have not been on best of terms throughout my life. What's been the problem? Um, Well, physical abuse... Um, he has, I guess, a really uh, bad. A lot of his problems come with uh, jobs, and most of my life I've been living with my grandmother, his what, mother. What do you mean he comes with jobs? Well, his, I mean, he's been in between, uh, I mean, he got a degree from a college, uh, and he's not been able to hold a decent job, so. How come? I don't know. The man got him down, I think, got him. Yeah. And, and it caused a lot of depression. I mean, he's, I mean, he's the, you know, puke blood and stuff but the my Puke, puking blood is something alcoholics do well he did and he's not an alcoholic he had he's had a lot of problems but he's getting his life back together but it's almost like he's kind of forgotten about me he's never been there for me he's never shown any kind of i don't i mean you know yeah. things that fathers do he has not shown right. okay what's the question then um well 
I don't know how to express to him that he's wrong. He doesn't think that he is. He he tells me that that I'm wrong. That um, I've done things. I don't know. I'm. I mean, I use drugs. I've dropped out of school. He's. He, I mean, he considers me the headache. Yeah. Well, first off, how much contact do you have with him now? Um. Well, I only call him. You don't live with him. No, I live. I still live with my grandmother. His and are you telling me he doesn't do drugs? No, he does not. Never did any drugs. No. Okay. Drew doesn't believe you, but that's uh, beside the point. Tyler, here's the deal. Your dad's an idiot. He's a bad dad. And confronting him is not going to somehow no. render him into a new dad. No, I mean, that's that's the thing about bad people. Confronting him doesn't really do much. In fact, it makes it, sometimes it makes you feel worse. Well, yeah. I have a, I've, I had the, a letter in an envelope that it was in the mailbox, and then I heard your show, and I was like, I'm going to call and ask before I send this letter, and I was wondering if I could read some of it to you. Sure. Okay. Does it, hold on, does it rhyme? <laughs> no. Oh. With Nantucket? <laughs> well, there once was a drunk from Tyler, Texas. <laughs> All right, go ahead. First line, um, as a father... Right, how, how long is this thing? I'll only... Just tell me to stop. All right, just give us the bullet points. Go ahead. Okay, as a father, you are dead to me. Um, That's a nice way to go. Is, uh, that, is that Hallmark, or did you write that yourself? I wrote that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I tried to remember growing up with you as a fun time, but all attempts have failed with tears and hate. Um... Um, we been in between houses, jobs. Te- uh, and, and by the way, there's a good probability he's already stopped reading. You, you, seriously, you give, you give an idiot a letter like that, it's phew, well, just stop reading it. Yeah, keep yeah. going, Tyler. This is good. Um, I wish, I wish that I had not known you as a real person, but only as a weekend dad. That to me would have been better. I know at this point in my life, I have failed myself with drugs, dropping out, and just being lazy. I hope to turn my life around. And I also want you to know that I do not wish anything bad to happen to you. In fact, I hope you have a good life and forgive you for not being there for me when I needed you. Also, I forgive you for hurting me physically. I know your temper and I pushed you, and I'm sorry for that. Sometimes I feel like I'm out of place and my, what I'm feeling is wrong. But that's just me being a chicken and not... Yeah, so I have a really couple questions. How many times did he hurt you physically? The, um, not that many times are okay, I'm just curious. I remember being really little, and we lived with his best friend, and I did something. I remember uh, it was a two-by-four, and I just remember having bruises when I was too little. He hit you with a two-by-four? Several times. Wow. All right, but it's that's, not... Yeah, it's... Woof. It's not two-by-six or a oh, header stock, over the top. You know? Hey, uh, Tyler? And where's Mom? Well, hold on a second. Tyler? Yes? Uh, first off, I'd like you to uh, peel off a copy of that and send it out to my dad. <laughs> uh, just a quick alteration about the part for uh, forgiving him. For his uh, anger, like just cross that part out and then send it off. I'll give you the address off the air, right? <laughs> uh, hey, Tyler. Yeah. Listen, um, here's the here's the deal. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up in about twenty seconds for you. You got a ton of feelings and a ton of energy, ton of hurt, ton of ton of everything, anger and hurt about this whole situation. Unfortunately, you telling your dad this is not going to get the kind of satisfaction you want out of him. And it won't make you feel better. You think it will, but it, it won't. The, it, the letter is okay. I'm certainly not, glad he's not trying to do it face-to-face. Better to write the letter yeah, than even yeah. to send it. But here's the point, Tyler. You need to have a life for yourself. Your relationship with your dad will repair over time, and you can work that one out. You don't need to fix that first. Yeah. The first thing you need to do is have a good life. Make some money, be successful, get your education, get out of grandma's house, have everything focus on you, and your relationship with your dad will sort its way out as time goes on. But don't focus all your energy on dad. And, and don't forget that in, if you are if you are working a good program in your addiction recovery, you should be looking at forgiveness. Right. And that will be a more uh, serene place. All right. We'll uh, take ourselves a little break. When we come back, we'll speak to Darnell. Who has a theory? You know, it always frightens me when our callers have theories. His uh, theory is 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 to uh, why girls, uh, why guys like seeing girls pee on each other. But uh, this should be fascinating. After this, yeah. Love Line. I'm Adam Caroli. Is Dr. Drew over there? Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Crazy Town will be in here tomorrow night, and then uh, Lincoln Park will be in here. We like Lincoln Park on a Sunday night. Yes, we do, and we may like Crazy Town too. We never know. Darnell. Yes. 
Oh, okay. Let's hear your uh, half-baked theory. I'm a, First of all, I'm a long-time listener, first-time caller, and um, I think my half-baked theory is uh, a little more on than... Uh, all right, let's hear it. ...than uh, <laughs> your panties-off uh, thing, but... Um, I think it's it's uh, as guys, you know, we're we're more into the the toilet stuff, and uh, you know, peeing is like a big deal for us uh, from early on. You know, we can stand up and and pee anywhere, and and so I think it's just uh, you know, guys who get into that find uh, validation, you know, in uh, seeing a girl do it, and so uh, that's uh, what kind of validation? What do you mean validation? Um, what does that mean? This is, by the way, Darnell's theory on why guys like watching girls pee in the Hustler magazine. The, the, the Hustler stuff, are they peeing on people? Uh, no, they're normally peeing on the ground. So just watching them pee is, is theoretically what guys like? Yeah. In theory, yes. Okay. And, and what is where the smart money is. Do you think right. it is some sort of transgender issue? that Some sort of identification no. with mom or something? Well, yeah, I, I don't know. I suppose it could do something like you know some sort of association with uh, why guys like wearing women's underwear as well. Yeah, but what percentage of guys who jack off the hustler enjoy wearing women's underpants? <laughs> hey, Darnell, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd assume a great deal. Darnell, yeah, do you get any action yourself? Uh, yeah, not lately. Yeah, he assumes shocking. a great deal with want to jack off with underwear. Shocking. You do think a great deal? Of hustler, uh, hustler readers probably uh, like, like uh, girls undies. Like the wear girls underpants. Yeah. Really, uh, higher than fifty percent. Uh, probably around there. I don't know. It's about about fifty percent of the men who look at hustler enjoy wearing women's underpants. Uh, uh I don't know. Darnell, you need to go to work for the college, <laughs> collecting data. Hey, no, he's an epidemiologist. You don't know that? <laughs> Darnell, what's up with you? What happened to you? You get dropped? Me? No, no. You mean on your head? Where are you going? To junior college? Uh, State University. Yeah, that's almost junior. Um, I also have a uh, man evasion idea. Oh, Darnell. <laughs> uh, hold on, Drew. You know how I, 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 I never, I'm constantly disappointed by our listeners' theories well, and ideas? You, now you've become cringing. Yes, when you know they're coming. He started this. Uh, he started this one off. He, he prefaced this with, uh, "I think this is going to be a little more insightful yeah. than the than the ex explanation you offered yeah. some nights and, ago." And, and mostly, your, and more than your lame listeners would normally offer. Right. What was Darnell's theory about why men enjoy watching women urinate? Because they like watching. No, <laughs> I, like I still don't know what it, yeah, was. it was. Nothing, Darnell. It's you had no explanation. Control. Men like urine. That was your explanation. Yeah, they like they're validated by urine. Yeah. What does that mean? What does that mean? Uh, okay, give me the manifestation. Okay. Uh, okay. Have you seen the uh, the popularity in uh, men's uh, <sighs> like shower products and such that is? Uh, sure, it's going through the roof. Exactly, Who can afford it? Exactly. Like, what are you talking about? Well. I think uh, there should be a whole line of stuff that not only does, like, uh, a body wash and shampoo and conditioner and stuff, but also doubles um, to help in the prostate maintenance department while you're in there. How would that work? How would that be different than soap? Uh, well, you can't, you can't necessarily use everything. I don't, I don't attempt it. All right. Okay, thanks, Darnell. All right. Thanks, but you, you keep writing down those ideas, all right? Yeah, I'll keep plugging along. Keep plugging along. I want all you to right. write down all your theories, all your innovation ideas. Collect them, bind them, turn them in a book, and then uh, douse them in kerosene and burn them on, on your lawn in some sort of ritual. Right. All right. Thanks. All right, buddy. Bye. Keep rock and roll. So let's recap that one. Well, the reason guys enjoy uh, watching uh, women pee on, on each other or just by themselves is because uh, we feel a connection with urine. Because, no, standing up and urinating. Yeah. Somehow that reminds us of ourselves. They're right. 50% like of uh, men <laughs> who read Hustler enjoy wearing women's <laughs> underpants, at least 50%. <laughs> and uh, a great manovation for the, uh, for the uh, year 2001 would be with the, uh, the onslaught, the uh, avalanche of uh, male-related bathroom products you've been seeing lately, yes. such as... So, there's something soap, called soap, soap and another thing called shampoo. Ooh, yes, right. Shocking, right? You you can't you can't walk ten feet without seeing a billboard for soap or shampoo. Men's soap or shampoo. Well, who's ever heard of that before? Here's uh, some, and something. His else. will double as a lubricant. Michael. Yes. 
You're uh, 19. It never fails. I'm always disappointed by our callers. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> You're 19. Um, well, my question is, ever since I was probably about 11 or 12, um, I've noticed that I've had uh, oversized nipples. And um, it, all my weight seems to go to my stomach and my chest. And um, it's not that my whole chest is bigger, but I've, my nipples are probably a little, the, I guess the circumference of them is a little bigger than a quarter, but they're about an inch they stick out about an inch, and it's kind of embarrassing. Wearing no, your nipples do not stick out an inch. Oh, uh, it's pretty close. The nipple itself. Yes. Just the pointy part of the nipple. Uh, well, the yeah, I guess. The, yeah. Do you already include the fleshy stuff underneath? No, yeah, that too. Yeah, the fat underneath. The right. whole the whole thing's an inch. Yeah, and I guess my question was, I wanted to know if that was something that could be from I have like if I have like a more estrogen than most males. Yes, uh, and that's probably you said you were overweight. I'm, I'm not overweight. I'm actually really thin everywhere. It's just all my weight seems to go to my stomach and my chest. And yeah. it's not like I have a huge chest or anything like that. It's not like from Fight Club, but it's just... you smoke a lot of pot? What's that? Do you smoke a lot of pot? No, I don't. Okay. How much do you weigh? Um, about 170. How tall are you? 6'2". Mm, no so way. Not overweight. You just collect that weight. Yeah, I mean, it's not, the weight issue is not a big deal. It's not noticeable at yeah. all. It's just... Yeah. It's just... It's just if you put on uh, one pound, uh, 13 ounces of that is in your uh, boobs. Everything else it's normal? bad times. Normal hair distribution? Right. Normal sexual functioning? Right. He's got this kind of clomastia. Yeah. Some guys have this. Yeah. I, I, I know they have surgeries. Yeah, oh, yeah. I don't know, but what, what are you removing when the guy's not really overweight? Well, I mean, they, wouldn't it just come back? No, not necessarily. Why not? They take out some of the glandular tissue sometimes. That would... Can contain the fat or yeah. produce it. It just shrinks it back. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, is if you oh, have if, a, she, if you gained again, would it come back? No, the cells are gone. The cells that store which the fat is like the Tupperware that collects the fat. Right. So you remove the Tupperware, and you can only store so much chili con carne. Right, more or less. Hmm. And there, there are certain sort of. They do that with liposuction. Yeah, that's lipos. Lipo is that what that is? Yeah. Well, I was always wondering because, you know, to me, liposuction was like removing the fat from the area. But obviously, if it's a place where you're prone to gain weight, you put on another five pounds, and that's where it's going. No. But it won't go there anymore. It can't anymore. go there. No cells there to store it. There's nothing to hold it. Right. Yeah. Go somewhere else. Nice. Let's Should we do it? about that. Yeah. I, I mean, if this if this is a situation where the guy's 6'2 and 170, and he has, you know, uh, C-cups, this is something he's got to make a move on. Mm -hmm. Because... Uh, Lord knows he's nineteen. Wait till he wait till he's six two and two thirty five mm -hmm. when he's uh, twenty when he's thirty one. Mm -hmm. He's going to have uh, D cups. Hey, uh, Michael. Yes. You may want to uh, consult a plastic surgeon and just uh, well, it, see what I, he has to say. As, it's not quite as extreme as you're thinking. It's not the actual like the whole breast. It's just the nipple. But it's it's noticeable if I was to wear like a t shirt or yeah. Well, nipples are what you got. Those aren't changing. Those aren't changing. Yeah, but what about what's behind the nipple that's sort of pushing it Spreading forward? Spreading it out, yeah. Hey, uh, hey, Michael? Yeah. What about just a whole bunch of exercise, lots of push-ups and uh, those kinds of things? Well, if that'd work, I'd... Well, it couldn't hurt. I yeah. mean, what about what about doing something that really, like, isolates that muscle like flies? Inclined dumbbell presses. Yeah. Like okay. How, how, you, you got any weights? Uh, no, I don't. Why don't you get yourself a uh, weight bench, uh, tip it up at an angle, and grab yourself, like, some 20-pound dumbbells and do those flies i'll give it a shot and just really uh, see if you can blast that area for uh two months and see what if it does anything okay and now now the fat will sit on top of a muscle and stick <laughs> yeah. out even further yeah that's nice yeah it's gonna look uh it's gonna look nice hey if that doesn't work go to a, go to a plastic surgeon just see what he says yeah hey worst case scenario is you look at uh, the before and after pictures I'll go to a plastic surgeon every once in a while and just uh, say, uh, I'm looking for breast reduction for my girlfriend for uh, her birthday. I'm shopping around. Can I see some, uh, let me see the uh, before book. Ha. Let me see the before book on the breast reduction and the after book on the breast augmentation, please. Well, and then how do you explain <clears throat> the fact that you run off to the bathroom right then? Yes, I'm going to need a uh, six pack of uh, Schlitz Tall Boys. Uh, some paper towels, and uh, hold my calls, please. I'll be in the bathroom. And um, uh, I'll need a chair to wedge against the bathroom door so no one comes in. Thank you. Yes, I've been known to do that many times. Chris? Yes. You're 20? Yes. What's up? Um, basically, um, I attend a college, and I recently got into a 
a relationship with a 17 year old mm-hmm. and um we've been going out for some time and we recently had engaged in oral sex and then right. she goes to the same college yes hmm. she's in one of those youth outreach outreach programs mm-hmm. right right they think they're getting a leg up really they're just blowing older guys <laughs> youth outreach here reach for my penis Reach out for the penis. Thank you. <laughs> so, is, would she be like an advanced student? Um, yeah, what? actually, because she, she's over here. Um, she's from Indonesia. And she's here on an F one visa. Oh boy! Wow. And well, um, she's there on an F one visa. Yes. Yeah. My family came over on an F U visa. They uh, <laughs> stayed. They ended up staying. Really? Yeah. Huh? They're still being sought after by the federal government. <laughs> All right, uh, Chris. Yeah. Now listen. First, she's from uh, Indonesia. You say. Yes. Yeah, women start having sex there at nine. So she's considered an old maid in her uh, native land. Number two, yeah, you guys are both in college. I'm all right with this. You like her? Uh, yeah, I like her a lot. All right. Yeah, just take it slow, treat her right. Yeah, how much different would it be if she were dating an 18 or 19 year old? You know, well, no, first she's off, in college, so she's in school. With. Chris is a 21, Chris is a 20 year old guy. Who's, he's, he's got a little more 15 in him than he does, yes, yes. Than he does 25. Yep. He's a 20-year-old guy who's closer to 15 than, than to 25. Yep. And uh, you'd rather have this 20-year-old 20, 20 date your daughter than one of these scumbag 16-year-olds that calls this show, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I was fingering my girlfriend, and then uh, my, you know, I would let my dog lick my finger, and then I was like, finger again? I want to know if I can give my dog a disease. <laughs> you'd rather have this 20-year-old date your daughter than that guy, right? Not much. What is the answer to that question? We'll talk about it during the break. All right, we'll be back. Love line. I'm Adam. That's Drew. Phone number 1 800 L V E 191. Vinnie Jones from Snatch is not in the building. He was uh, slated to come out here tonight and uh, has not made it. That's all right. Crazy Town will be in here tomorrow night. And then uh, Lincoln Park Sunday night. I have a little difficulty figuring out uh, what day it is. I wonder why that is. Because of. Well, I don't know. I don't know what it is with me, but uh, this week feels slower or faster. I Did can't, you work on can't Monday? remember what it is. Did I work where? Martin Luther King Day? Did you work at all? Because a lot of people took that day off. And... Oh, yeah. What was it? Oh, I worked on my house. Yeah, of course. Yeah. What are you doing? What are you working on now? I'm uh, remodeling uh, Jimmy's office. Oh, my okay. uh, my uh, funny partner. He has an office in your house? He has an office in uh, his house, huh. and uh, it's getting gutted big time. It's time to... Uh, orchestrate that. It takes mm. a lot of orchestra and build them all the cabinets and all that good stuff. Uh. He has an eclectic taste though, that Jimmy. He's a, little, he's a tough client. Mm. Kat? Um, hello? You're 16. Yeah, um, I have a lot of, like, scars because I used to cut myself and some of them are pretty, like, big and, like, ugly. And I was wondering if there's a way I could get rid of them, like something I could put on them. Where are the scars? On my arms and I have some on my legs and on my stomach. <laughs> That's the thing about scars. There's not a lot you can do about them. There's there's some laser techniques now. And well, that's why they call them scars, right? Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, they're scabs. Otherwise, they're yeah, yeah. And then um, on your belly. Yeah. You were cutting your belly. Well, like yeah. Um, but, and they're scars because you were picking at them. Well, no. But she really I went deep. They went healing. You went real deep. <sighs> yes. Uh, kind of. Yeah, like, on my arms, I have some really bad scars. Do you need, did you need stitches? No, um, I don't know, they, they probably could have used stitches, but I don't know. Um, yeah. they look really ugly. Alright, well, are you, are you done cutting on yourself? Uh, well, I, I don't know, I, I haven't for, like, a long time, but I just recently did, so... I, like, I don't know, I, I try not to, but I've been starting to do that again lately. Hmm. And uh, if you're going to cut on yourself, could you go the other direction and create a sort of checkerboard pattern? Uh, I suppose so. Play a tic-tac-toe in your belly? Or, yeah. Do you have some kind of a dissociative disorder when you do these cutting? Do you just dissociate? Um, what do you mean, exactly? Yeah. Really? Anyone ever tell you you have more than one personality? No. Or do you dissociate where you kind of don't know what you're doing? When you cut? Well, yeah, kind of. What's up? Did someone abuse you? Uh, um, I don't know. Like, I guess not like overt, like abuse, but kind of emotional abuse. Yeah. Why do you think you're cutting on yourself? Well, 
Um, I went to see a psychiatrist a couple of months ago, and she said I'm bipolar, and I don't know. Does that have anything to do with that? Sure, it's part of it. Did well, she give I've you been some... in a mental hospital a couple of times. Did she give you some medication? Yeah. Are you taking it? Yeah. All right, good. Does it make you feel better? Not really. Mm. What about putting vitamin E on the scars? Uh, not likely to do much. And again, there's some lasers that can be maybe useful in this thing. That's really surgeons expensive, can be, though. Isn't yeah, what it, well, okay. If you're looking for something cheap to try to get rid of those scars, it ain't, ain't going to happen. Uh, it can't? Uh-huh. Uh, here's the deal, baby. Uh, they're Again, they're called scars because they don't go away. But the good news uh-huh. is is there's a, been a huge breakthroughs with this stuff in, I'd say, just the last few years. And what they can do with the lasers is pretty marvelous. Maybe a little bit expensive. And it may not, not be the kind of thing you can deal with for a few years. So the first thing is, is don't cut anymore. Do your therapy. Stick with your program, your, your psychiatry. Take your medication and work on not adding any more scars. And scars can shrink quite a bit. Yeah, they'll shrink. And then in, a, in, a, in some time when uh, your head's in a better place, th- then you can go uh, get them removed and how use much, a laser. How much would that cost about? It's about don't 100 know. bucks a lineal inch. Don't know. We don't know. Oh, I don't know. Okay. All right. Come on, baby. What's up? Thanks. You all right? Yeah. Well, what's, why are you so freaked out? Um, freaked out? I don't know. Well, you, you just sound like you're in a bad way. Um. You're 16. You got computers and VCRs. Enjoy. We didn't even have cable when I was growing up. Yeah. You had on TV. Yeah. Had nothing. Cat. Uh-huh. Do you have any friends? Yeah, I have friends. Good. Talk Good. to them. Hang out with them. Have a laugh. I mean, I do. I, like, try not to, like, spend time alone, but... Right. Yeah. You go to a regular school? Uh, no. I Well, I go to, a, like, an alternative school. Oh, boy. So you, uh, smoke cigarettes with your teachers during the, uh, during the break, call everyone by their first name, roll in at noon every day and roll out of there about one fifteen, one thirty. Oh, no. I go from one thirty to 7. No. Oh. What the hell kind of school is that? That's a, that's a swing shift. That's not a school. What, what alternative was that mean? Um, I like uh, it's a smaller school. It's like is it attached? Is it attached to a bigger school? Um, it's in the basement of a library. All righty. God knows what's going on. Are you learning anything? Uh, yeah. Okay, and you can uh, apply those credits toward a GED one day. No, I'm going to graduate high school. All right, baby. Well, good. En- enjoy yourself. Okay. Lighten up a little. I'll try. All right. Thanks. Relax. She doesn't sound like she, uh, like Atlas. The weight of the world on her back, yeah. this one. 16. Come on, everybody. Well, listen, I, I don't want to sound like Mary Poppins here, but... <laughs> don't worry. Your-, your parents are a pain in the ass. I know that. The-, the situation at home's not great, but find yourself some friends. And the best times I've had has been with my friends. They bailed me out of jail. They bailed me out of trouble. I've got to watch them have sex. Uh. It's great. And I hang out with your friends. Have a laugh with your friends. Go, hey, you guys got to get back with your friends, especially you chicks. You guys are so busy borrowing each other's sweaters and banging each other's boyfriends. You don't know what a good relationship's like. Get your buddies. See, they don't. women don't call them buddies. Think about that. Mm. They ain't buddies. They're my friend and the competition. They ain't buddies. Get some buddies. Jason? Yeah. You're 20. Yeah. What's up? Um, I'm just curious as to what's the big deal about women's breasts, because I know that I'm infatuated with them. I just, I just love them. I just, I, I work at a restaurant and I... Oh, well, I, well, there you go. Enough said. Yeah, there you, you go. You work at a restaurant. They so, serve breasts. Yeah, exactly. I see women coming in wearing pretty much not much. And sure. And plus, I'm in Orange County, so... Yeah, you've got a lot of fake breasts around there. Exactly. Hey, you like breasts. Good. That's healthy. Do you work no, at uh, twin, twin Palms or something? Makes you a man. <laughs> of uh, course. Yeah. So I'm just curious w- why. I mean... Well, it's, when I uh, it's a, look at it. Look, I understand. It makes no rational sense. There are many. Oh yes, it does. Well, hang on. There's many things that the human does that uh, is not subject to rationality. And this is one of them. This is some part of our... Evolution, something well, that improved that improved the the, the uh, pro- propagation of the species. To me, the main difference between a man and a woman is the cans. 
is the jugs. Well, and there's, you there's take theories a, you that... You take a very skinny, wafy type woman, and what do you got? You got a teenage boy. And this theory is that if you idealize parts of women's body, that's a way to distance oneself from a little intimacy. Well, Adam. only if you uh, cut them off and play with them in your basement. <laughs> the way you do. Okay. Well, uh, I didn't say I did. I didn't say I didn't. We'll take a little break. We'll be back after this. I'm Adam. That is uh, my good buddy over there. Board certified for your comfort. Somebody was calling to say that Epstein Barr virus is a herpes virus. Okay. I don't know if CMV is, though, cytomegalovirus. Somebody said that uh, EBV is a herpes virus. Which, um, that makes sense to me. But I don't know that all monoviruses are herpes viruses. So if you have Epstein Barr virus, you may test positive for herpes? No. No. It's more specific than that. It's just not an accurate test. All right, I, I have not uh, it. figured it out. To me, the only kind of testing I think about is uh, dyno tuning with a <laughs> car. And, and, and listen, either you pass a smog or you don't. I don't know about all this. You, you, we, you know, we, we find uh, herpes in your blood, but you don't have it. I, I don't understand all that testing business. And I, I'm not so sure Drew does either, to be quite honest with you. Michelle? Yeah. You're 14? Um, actually, I'm 13. I just kind of said that. You spazzed out? Mm, yeah, I guess, you know. All right. I don't really hear a lot of 13-year-olds call. What's your question? Um, well, I kind of have, like, an obsession with dating, like, older guys, you know? How old? Like, some might be 18 or older. Are you a virgin? No. Mm. Was it with a 19-year-old that you lost your virginity? Um, actually, um, it was my stepbrother when I was about six. Perfectly normal, there perfectly healthy. Sure. Yeah. How old was he? Um, 18. Mm -hmm. And you were six? Yeah. Oh, boy. Can, can you see that kind of etches like, something into your psyche, and your brain function? Well, actually, it's it's weird because I don't really think about it that much. No, you don't have to. If you thought about it, you might not do it. Yeah, arousal and attraction does not come from the thinking part of your brain. Yeah, like Otherwise, I people, I would, people would always choose perfect partners then. If you could just think out, mm, what do I want, what do I need, pow. It's not the way it works. Attraction and arousal is built on trauma. Yeah. Oftentimes, <laughs> and in your case, it's, it's true. Is it that true? <laughs> That's a lovely yeah. thought. It's, but it's true, and here you are. Here's and where it's it's etched into your chemistry. I don't know. It's like a, it's like all through. I've been growing up. You know, I've been like raped and molested, and well, that's all. Had but it all put to my head. But it all started back with that that first experience when you were six. Yeah. Who I mean, was uh, raping you and molesting you growing up? Well, like I don't know, just people that I didn't even know. Sometimes you know, and they would just like just rape you and molest you. Yeah, and. I, I don't know, like, I tell, like, my friends sometimes, you know, and, like, they, they, I know they wouldn't want to hear it because they wouldn't, like, they change the subject, you know? Mm. But I don't know, it's yeah. like... Where are you calling from, by the way? Um, San Dimas, California. I see. Yeah, it's, like, around there, but... When you are really a, a high-caliber victim... Uh, mm -hmm. There's sort of no end of victimizers lining up to get after you. No, and, and you're 13. Yeah. And you yeah. could put together a good 20-year run of uh, rape and molestation. Well, no, she'll make a career of this. I mean, she'll get into porn or, or a, stripping yeah, or something. Yes. Hey. Well, don't damn her to porn or stripping just yet. <laughs> hey, Michelle? Yeah. What's up? Where's your stepbrother now? Well, um, <clears throat> he, my stepdad also, like, fooled around with my sister mm. yeah. a lot. And, yeah. like, so we left. We lived in Ohio. Mm -hmm. And we came out here, and my mom, like, wanted to start over, you know? Yeah. And, like, I came out here, and I had a really rough time. Ended up being stalked and had to transfer schools many times. And Who stalked you? Um, some 19-year-old guy. He was, like, one of my friends, older friends, you know? And yeah. they gave him my number. And he came to my door with a gun mm. and got me in his car and took me to Pomona at the top of this hill, you know, and raped me and shot, like, right next to my head and left me there, so... You know, it was... Oh, it sounds like a dynamite individual. I don't know. It's like... It's... it's. By the way, just, just going to Pomona is rape, rape enough. Rape one. Yeah. Yeah. Just just being abducted and taken to Pomona is uh, enough, enough cause for some serious therapy. Hey, Michelle? Yeah. Okay. Well, hold on, baby. This... Uh, I'm telling you, if your life was an Etch-A-Sketch, I would shake <laughs> it vigorously. Mm -hmm. he, okay. Here's the deal. You got to stop. Get help. You have you to can. get help. I mean, you cannot I, I act know, out. I really, I mean, it's like, it's like, I write poetry, you know, I'm so, like, 
emotionally advanced. No, no, you th- no. I, yeah, no, no it, it's it's not it's not advanced. It's scarred. Well, emotionally experienced. It's, it's, yeah, it does not mean advanced. M- most people haven't been raped by thirteen. Although <laughs> uh, recent reports suggested at least sixty five percent of the uh, hustler readers. Lo- love line <laughs> love line callers and hustler readers have. Hey, Michelle. Yeah. You need therapy. You need counseling. You need a. You need a group. I've tried. Yeah, you've tried nothing. You're 13. I've tried it. You don't. I mean. How many years did you try it for? Like two or three. I don't know. I've I've gone to a bunch of them, and I just I can't sit and tell somebody about my life, and I don't even know anything about them. You know, I'm not. Well, what do you need to know anything about them for? Because I mean, I'm sitting there telling them stuff about me because they're professionalized in telling me what I should do to make. All right, listen. L- let me dispel. Person. Let me dispel a very popular notion, which is more BS than it is notion. It's more of an excuse than it is notion. This guy's not my friend. He doesn't know me. He doesn't know me. I don't know him. Good. That's right. That's that's good. That's the way it should be. Same with the pilot who flies the plane. Same with the doctor who puts his finger up your ass. It's best you don't know him. Yeah. You understand? Okay. He's a professional or she's a professional and they're there to do a job. You two having a prior relationship or you knowing that they were divorced two times. Screws it and up. Had a little had a little trouble with cough syrup in the uh, <laughs> mid-80s is not going to help. It screws it up. Y- yes, it makes it worse. You're there for you. They are professionals. It's like you going to a mechanic. He doesn't know my car. He's never driven my car. He wasn't there when I bought He doesn't care. He's a professional who works on mechanics. cars. What's that? I don't worry about mechanics. Yes. You, uh, that's uh, what you call a metaphor there, baby. Yeah, I know. I know. You use that in your poetry. Yeah, okay. That and some simile. Yeah, Michelle, if you don't want help, things, ain't, things are going to get worse. Yeah. You're going to hook up with a whole bunch of and, older, abusive guys. It's trouble. And it, it, it's, it's, I suspect feelings of powerlessness are so profoundly overwhelming to you that you're not willing to trust somebody else you're not willing to be open and feel that powerlessness in any way you'd rather be in situations where you are indeed powerless but believe that somehow you're in control of those situations that they're your fault that you were actually in control of them i don't know by acting those out over and over and over and over again i mean it's not like I, i've been suicidal before but it's not like i feel like deeply depressed you know yeah or traumatized but it's like no. i have this like link to like older guys you don't yeah. feel much of anything listen this this link to older guys I mean, is gonna undo you believe me, there's gonna be more 19 year olds taking a pomona right there's you, lots of them you understand me mm-hmm. now you tell your mom you need some you need to get some help well, i don't talk to my mom yeah well the problem you, is you, that I don't get along good with my mom, and I can't just go up to all her right. and say all this. Well, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to do? Send I, over my magic uh, eagle to uh, snatch you up and take you to my hillside hideaway? I don't know. Where you can be raised in peace? No, but I mean... It's not like, going to work. How am I going to approach, like, uh, talking to her about you? It, you know? yeah, I, I'm sorry... Okay, Liz, Michelle, I'm going to put your whole life in a in a 10-second nutshell. Oh, that's not you, good. You listening? Yeah. I'm Listen good. to me. I'm sorry for the hand that you got dealt in your life. Your mother is a mess. She chose a horrible, uh, brutal stepfather. God knows what kind of shape your biological father's in, and I'm sorry for all the things that have happened to you up until this point in your life. Now, but you're wise beyond your years, and it's time to make a change, all right? You're aware of that. Yeah. Now you have two choices. There's two paths. One is counseling. One is reaching out. One is groups. One is relationships. One is therapy. And the other path Pomona. is 19-year-olds with uh, rancheros with uh, Bondo all over the passenger door, pistols and Pomona. Mm-hmm. Now, your natural instinct, your gut instinct will take you to Pomona. Yeah. That's yeah. where you will go. Like uh, the swallows coming home to Capistrano, you will go back to Pomona for more raping. I'm telling you this right now. Now, you're mature and you're aware. You can hear me. You're yeah, lucid. I can hear you. You have to go the other direction. I know what you I'm going the other to. direction. You have to. But these older guys. But no. Adam, these older guys. I don't care. I, and here's the tough part about that other direction. It's not easy. It's not uh, Bill Cosby's not going to come over in a 15-tone sweater and agree to raise you in his palatial mansion. It's not going to be as gratifying as going after the older guys. You have to do it. You have to do what you don't want to do. You have to talk to a counselor at school. It's you like have stopping to talk drugs. to your mom. The same you deal. have to do it. Same deal. All right? All right. All right. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. <laughs>
have fun on that. You day. know what's what's fascinating about that part of the brain that gives us attractions and give us, uh, mm-hmm. you know, passions of, towards other people, is that it doesn't learn. It doesn't learn. No, it does the same thing over. It's a repetition, and even though she ends up with a guy holding a gun to her head, uh, still doesn't teach her to not go and get in the car with the nineteen-year-old again. Yeah. And even even if she says to herself, "I'm never going to do that again. I'm going to look for features of the guy that's not anything like that guy." She'll still find another victimizer. No, well, the whole part about that side of the brain is so that the one little part that does seem to have some truth and some light never sees daylight. Mm. It's just about quieting that one little voice that tells you it's time for some therapy. It's time for some change. And no, the more you do it, the more you do it. It's it's like drugs. I mean, it, you want to do some blow, you'll do some blow, you'll do a little more and a little more and a little more. It, it feeds itself. It doesn't. You don't get it out of your system. It's not like, well, I did heroin all last week and uh, I got my fill of that. But it's not addiction, really. It's a, it's a repetition neurosis. It's yeah, a- but but this is, I mean, uh, I'm no addiction medicine specialist, but I still believe I'm smarter than you are. And I can tell you that... It's the same quality. Yeah, it has the same in quality. that it has no end. And it doesn't learn. You do it in order to stop some pain in the immediate. Right. And it just has no bottom. It has no finish. It has no fourth quarter. No gun ever sounds. You just in- keep engaging going. Engaging in the same behavior and expecting a different outcome. Right. All right. We will uh, hop to another call here. <laughs> which is almost done. Well, <laughs> I thought that's enough. <laughs> Emotionally, I need a break. <laughs> Come on, let's go have a cigarette and a shot off the uh, flask I keep uh, strapped to my hip. Jen. Yes, hi. 19, what's up? Not much. And, and actually, you guys, I really don't agree completely with <clears throat> the fact that uh, you, quieting that one little voice for therapy is the only uh, thing that happens. Because eventually you get to a point where you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. And then that voice that says... You need to get help on this one. Right. It kicks in. Yes, that's true. But but some people die before that does kick in. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. Yeah. And well, what do you think I was saying? Pardon? She, he was saying the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, listen, I'm a, I'm 19, and. Um, Are you an addict? Is that what you know about being sick and tired? Pardon? Are you a recovering addict? Is yes, that? Yes, I am. Yeah. Yes. And amongst and Al Anon, et cetera, et cetera. Were you a sex addict also? <laughs> no, no, actually, uh, the opposite. Um, no, just uh, just um, booze and actually food. Mm-hmm. And so I'm I'm recovering in several areas. Were you an overeater or just a little bit of, of well, compul- just a compulsive eater where mm-hmm. I'd have the you know I'd, I'd binge for a week and then I'd starve myself for two and. And um, it kept me out of trouble more than when I switch over to uh, drinking. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, when it would, I'd get in a little too much trouble with that, I'd go back to eating. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. so, luckily, one day at a time, I get to have a. Uh, What's the question now? The question is, I. Um, it seems that every time I I engage in in a sexual relationship, um, I I lose interest in sex. And I don't. I. I'm. And it's not that I'm. I just got out of a relationship, um, of almost a a, a year and a half, and um, you know. And, and before it ended, it uh, about three months into it, I started just losing interest in in, in sex, and I've noticed <sighs> that yeah. all along that's what happened. I'm wondering if that's normal. What's going on? Well, it, there's two ways people can avoid intimacy. One is by engaging in, ex- in sexual compulsivity, or and the other is shutting down the sex. Mm. And so, yeah. you had mentioned you, you have got a lot the, of you got that one that makes your boyfriend mad. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, how often would you guys have sex? Um, well, see, I would, I would, anyways, just to, oh. you know, make him. Oh, happy. good times. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good girl. Well, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> God knows the amount of times I've had sex with someone who didn't want to have sex with me. I have no idea. Could be over 100%. <laughs> over 100%. <laughs> I think it could be like 103%. Uh. <laughs> I'm, 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 for the next three times I have sex or whatever, I'm, I'm doing it in advance. I'm I calculating in advance. <laughs> but I've been grateful each and every time and, and probably never knew the difference. Probably. Uh, but uh, so listen, you, it's the, uh, don't look at it as sex. Look at it as intimacy. Okay. And and that's what you're pulling away from. 
All right. Uh, and uh, that's just that you're 19. I mean, it just takes it, it takes time to work this out. But it isn't when you're slowing down with the sex? Do you feel yourself pulling out of the relationship? No, just the opposite. I really want the all of the the. Uh, for lack of a better term, the warm fuzzies of the the um, you know just cuddling and watching movies and and doing. Um, Do the guys stop delivering on that? A lot of times, yes. And in fact, in the, the this last one, I found out he, after a year and a half, um, he just was lying to me all along. It was really really painful, but um, you know, and and. You, probably has a drinking problem. Mm-hmm. How old was he? 19. Uh, no, 20. I see. Turned 20. All right. I don't know. I, I, these things might sort themselves out. You've done some recovery. You're working on al You need some more growth. You need some more experience. You've made some bad choices with the guys. Maybe the, maybe the instinct to pull back was actually a good one. You just didn't really listen to it. You know, maybe this is the wrong relationship. Yeah. Well, you so, mean the lying alcoholic yeah, guy? Yeah, exactly. I mean, maybe that was Not an, dare you. Maybe that actually was an instinct that was good. I don't know. I think she just needs to... She's 19. She's yeah. working a program. Yeah. And things will, I bet these things will kind of sort out. Well, and, and also, she's the kind of person... Uh, let me tell you something. Intimacy is something that goes last. I mean, intimate relationships. What do you mean it goes last? When you sort yourself out. Oh, it gets better well, What happens is... No, yeah. What I'm saying is... is People, you know, they drink or they do coke or they have an eating disorder. They do whatever. They get that under control. Yeah. They start going to meetings. Yeah. They got 18 months sobriety under their belt. Right. They're feeling pretty good about themselves. They're exercising. Their relationship with the family's better. Their work's better. Everything's better. Yet they're still having rocky relationships. Sure. And they want to know why. They've got themselves in order. They got their ass together. Why not this? Why don't I just clear up this department? This department is much more involved. It is, and yeah, it's the much most, longer. Yes, it's the most complex, and most even, sensitive. Even though you've gotten your, you, you were a mess at 17 and you're on top of the world at 19, this one may not clear up until 26. Yeah. That's Thank right. you. So, start drinking again. Chad? Yeah. You're 19. Yeah. What's up? Uh, nothing. I was actually just wondering if you guys could call my girlfriend, try and salvage our relationship. All righty. I got her number. What is, you want me to call her in her cell or is she at home? Uh, she's at home. All uh, right. And uh, you think she'll pick up the phone? Yeah. And uh, what do you mean salvage? Well, um, you ever have one of those relationships where you get kind of mad at her for some reason? Like, not a big reason, but one of those little reasons. And then go have a few beers with buddies and then just talking like locker room trash to them. I'm not sure we can salvage this one. Or maybe we don't even want to. Well, now, here's, here's what we can do, Chad. If there is an event to undo, I think we can undo it. But if it's an overall type thing, we can't do it. Well, I'm not it, sure that, the, I mean, she, he comes in and abuses her, and we're supposed to make that okay? No, she, I, didn't abuse her. I didn't abuse her at all. I thought you said you came back and talked, said something to her. No, 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 I was just talking with buddies. I was just, like, kind of upset, and I was just talking with buddies, and I was all just, dude, I don't know, I just, I'm upset because I just got kind of jealous of her because she was going somewhere with a bunch of her friends. So what is to salvage, then? What is it, the issue? Why is she have? mad? Yeah. She, well, she broke up with me because she said, because I was talking to my buddies, and I was like, well, I don't know if I should break up with her or something like that, and she just basically is over my jealousy and was over me saying... Why do you keep referring back to what you spoke? Stop talking about yeah. you and your buddies yeah. putting back some beers. Was she sitting next to you? No, she wasn't. So, okay. Why was she mad? Why do you keep going back to what you said to your buddies if she wasn't privy to that information? Um, I don't know. She just... I. So I'm, not, I'm not sure Chad, we want to solve this one. That's having trouble connecting the dots here. Yeah. Chad, you went out with your buddies and put back a few beers and talked about her. Yeah. Chad's 19, by the way. What What does she know about what you said about her? Um. Well, all right. It's kind of a long story. I didn't want to get no, into it. Oh, for Christ's sake. It's not a long story, though, so I'll, I'll keep it short. All right. Did it's one a long your, story, but it's not a long story. Did one of your buddies... T- tattle on you? Did you Basically, come home? Because one of my buddies is dating his, his dating her. All right. Well, there you go. That's the connection we're looking for, right, sorry. Einstein. Sorry. Jesus Christ! You, it's <laughs> like you keep saying you went over here and said something, not in front of this person. How the f are we supposed to know how they found out? Just say one of your drunken buddies squealed on you. Sorry. There we go. All and, right. And that's what made her break up. Yeah. And, you, right. f- and you don't feel that way. You actually feel differently. No, I am. Deep, like, dead in love with her. Have you told her that? Yes. How does she react to that? She 
she said that she still she said that she still loves me too. Well, we need yeah. to get her side of the story. Chicks always say no, no, that. No, 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 no. Chad, right. you're gonna have to sit and listen while we get her side of the story. Though. All, right. All right, but All right. Chad, you give uh, Sarah the uh, number off the air, and I then we'll. Did. All right, is 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 Sarah? Hold on a second, Chad. First off, any you got a brave thing a guy named Chad, too <laughs> immature. Is uh, what do they get called when they grow up by their middle name or something? I don't know, like Chadwick, Chadley, Chadford, Chadman. What's Chad short for? I don't know. Chadwick, Chadwick, Chadwick. Chadwick. I don't know. Yeah. What would you ask him? No, no. <laughs> That's going to be a long story. <laughs> oh, my buddies was telling what my mom when she was naming me. Chester, maybe. Yeah. My buddy, Charles. My buddies drinking beer with my mom. When they were uh, looking through a book of names. Yeah. Hey, uh, Sarah, so what are we going to do? Are we going to call Chad's uh, better half? Okay. This is great radio. I'm uh, talking to <laughs> talking to Sarah. What Do you see Sarah? We're going to take a break. She's uh, staring, yeah, staring at the floor. All right, we'll take a little break. Drew, get some money out. we got to get something from that vending machine. Yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking I'm that. I'm peckish. Where's your popcorn? Oh, where's my popcorn? Let's, Where let's is find out. Popcorn? Let's find out. All right, we're going on Popcorn Quest. We may not be back if we don't find it. We may have to make a run. And then we'll get, uh, get, Chad, we'll get Chad back, and we'll get Chad's girlfriend. We'll get to the bottom of this after this. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Love line. I'm Adam. That is uh, Trusky over there. When we left off, we're speaking. Uh, we got a big tub of popcorn now, which... Somehow it tastes stale, even though it just came right out of the bag. Yeah. You getting that vibe? Yeah, a little bit. It's kind of weird. All right, let's take it easy. Don't eat that into the mic, Drew. It's not right. going to be easy. When we left over, speaking of Chad, Chad is uh, 19, went out, put a few beers back with uh, some of his bros. Then uh, one of them squealed when he talked about his old lady. She broke up with him. Chad's uh, still in love, wants her back, wants, uh, wants to see if we can patch things up for her. We want to hear her side of the story. Yeah, that's right. That is uh, Carrie. Carrie's, uh, how old is Carrie? Carrie? 17. 17. What's up there, Carrie? Uh, Drew, easy on the corn. Uh, right? <laughs> Nothing. How are you? What happened to the relationship with Chad? Um, well, I'm sure you probably already heard his side of the story. Yeah, we want to hear yours. Um, where to start? <laughs> We have gone out for probably like 15 months, on and off, a lot. Um, I think that we both kind of have issues with being jealous of stuff that we shouldn't. But, like, there's lots of little stuff that has led me to be kind of like... Uh, hold on. Drew, I'm going to go catch a nap in uh, Likes' office. Uh, she come wake me up when we when she tells us why they broke up. Right. Well, I think what she's building to is something that we hear all the time is that and, she's uh, been, she's been uh, this thing's been over for a long time. We went out to she went on the Fridays listen. and uh, I had the bacon club. Light on the lettuce. The ranch light fries. mayo. Extra mustard. So, but he, uh, Bottomless he she's been telling cup. him for a long time this is that over. That was our first day. I'm going back to eating popcorn. But the point is, though, he sees this whole thing as it just all of a sudden, out of the blue, one night I talked to a friend and pow, the whole thing's over. Guys Her, always. There's like another. The point is, like, I gave him. The best months of your life? A ton of chances to not be this way. And I'm not saying that it was a bad relationship and it's not. And I still. It's just the fact that, like, there's more to it than I could ever explain to you guys on the phone. Yes, but was there's there... More, like, you're never going to know all of it, so you can't judge the situation. Right, but that's where you're wrong. I judge, I judge people just based on their skin color. I don't need to know anything. But you do. <laughs> no, I don't. I, I make plenty of judgments. That's all I do all night. All right, I, listen, I do it when I'm driving. I do the, it when I'm on the phone. Is, though, I cast judgment all the time. Here's the deal. I know the person. You're done with this relationship. Is that accurate? Yeah. You're done, period. You're done because been, in 15 months he's been a certain way. You know what way that is, and you don't want to be with that. And he well. he ain't changing too fast. But it's is that, is that accurate? He'll, he'll change, but then he, forget he the details. Just get to the bottom line here. You're you're not you're not gonna you're not open to it again. That's it. Well, right? don't talk her out of it. No, I'm just curious. That's her position. I I just want to not have to deal with stuff right now. Like, Ooh. what do you mean? 
just not have to deal with having Chad? No, it's I don't even know why I'm even discussing this with you guys right now. Well, what's up in your life? Just like school and stuff and You feel a lot of pressure? Yeah. Has Chad put more pressure on you? No, not usually, but it it kind of puts a strain on things when we get in fights about stupid stuff and Right. Then he won't accept my apology, and we will fight about it, and never never seems to get completely cleared up, and it all just adds up. Mm -hmm. So is he a jealous guy? Mm, probably just as much as I'm a jealous girl. Uh-huh. So you, you two both have an energy, and you clash a little bit. Yeah. And uh, you've, been, you've been asking for change for some time, and he hasn't accommodated that? He, it's not that he doesn't try to accommodate, but somehow it always ends up to go, like, he'll start going back to All right. doing some of the stuff he did before. Do you want to hear what he has to say? Sure. Yeah, let's put him on. How do we put him on? Drew, put him on at the same time, would you? Chad? Yeah. Well, I guess you heard that. It's not sounding too great. No, I know. I still see a little bit of light under the door. You guys are just supposed to call her and tell her how much I love her and that I want her back, though. Yeah, I know, but she's heard that BS before. Yeah. I mean, 15 months, come on. Yeah. She's heard it all. And this is what women do. They hear a lot of talk, they listen for the, for a while, and then eventually they tune out. Yeah. And then Carrie's tuning out. But, uh, Chad, why don't you give, uh, give Carrie a quick pitch as to why she should be back in this relationship? Well, I know you don't want to hear that I'll change again because I know that you've heard it before and what's to think that I won't just change again for a little bit and then stop but you mean more to me than anything in the world and I can't even describe it but I just love you very very much and I want to work everything out and just be with you Chad this is Adam Carolla I'm uh, representing Carrie in the relationship uh, I think you're only making these claims of change because uh, she, you've been dumped and shooken up not at all. Uh, I bet if uh, I, if if my client never dumped you, you just it'd just be business as usual for you. Well, Adam, I mean, you've been in the situation where when you get back in, you get back it in. It is business you, as usual. You go right back to your old ways. Eh, you give it you give it a few days, but then you're right back in. Why should we believe that that that's not going to be the case this time around? Because I don't usually realize that, like I take stuff out in stupid ways and I act like a dumbass sometimes over stupid stuff. But I realize, though, it's like sometimes I don't realize what I've got until I've lost it, you know? Mm -hmm. But I know, like, she said it, She said before, you know, I don't know if I could do this again because we've been on and off a couple times. Well, now, see, that was going to be my next question. How, how many times has this been? Uh, like five. Uh-oh. But see, that's the thing. Instead of we get in, like, little arguments, we break up over them instead of talking about yeah. them, getting them, getting them straightened out, you know? Yeah. But on the other hand, maybe you guys are uh, trying to force something along that wasn't meant to go along. I know, it's, I, I, I know how it is, especially when you're a guy and you're 19. You just think every relationship is going to be your last one. No, not even that. All right. Ooh. Seriously, like it's not. I don't even think that, but I just know that how special she is and how much she means to me. All right. Carrie? Mm -hmm. What do you think? You want to try one more time? I think I don't really want to discuss this in front of... Nah, we don't have any listeners. Oh, really? No. That's ironic. What do you think? You're angry at Chad, aren't you? <laughs> right, why are you angry at him? Because he's disappointed you? He because he hasn't has... changed? Yeah. It's... Right. See, like I said before, there's, like, so much more to the situation. Oh, I know. But listen, I know what it is. You guys can judge it and make it part of your show and pick it apart and make jokes about it, but you'll never know. Hey. Hey, Chad? Yeah. Hey, Carrie sounds like a pain in the ass. Is she good looking? I'm a She's pain gorgeous. in the ass, and I'm a big bitch most of the time, but right. that's who I am. Right. Hey, Chad? Yeah. Why don't you find someone that's a little more laid back? She is laid back, though. She is beautiful. Yeah, she's, and she's, she's laid like, back like a, a Dalmatian on a double cappuccino. No way. She's the she's the greatest. Um, I don't know. I've just met Carrie. I'm not so I'm not impressed. Carrie, you're good looking, though, I'm right? Not, I'm not out to impress you, Adam, my friend. Are you good looking? She's gorgeous. Yeah. Hey, hey, Chad. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are your, your personalities are working out too well. I got I got a bad vibe about this one. She needs a, a more artistic type. 
I am artistic. That's what I'm saying. You need a more I artistic kind. Chad, no one named Chad is artistic, A number one. <laughs> All right. And All B right. number two, he's going out and slamming now, beers. I want you guys call each other. I want you to up the air here and sort of see what you want to do with this. This is not a way to end it here, certainly. No. You know what I'm saying? Just just reconnect. I don't know. You, you listen, do. you guys have broken up five times. I say that's this This should be the last time. That's it. Chad, you need to move on, buddy. I know you're all wound up in getting her back, but why? Why are you acting out? Because. Why, why are you telling your buddies that you should break up with her if you're so in love with her? Because it was one of those just dumb things that I... Oh, no, no, that's that not dumb. Time. That's not dumb. No, because you, have you ever said stuff that was completely irrelevant, that didn't mean anything at the time you wake up the next morning, you're like, no. how the hell did I say quite that? Quite the contrary. You've said things that you denied yourself had meaning. Right. That ended up having quite a bit of meaning. Yeah. Uh, hey, listen, hey, Chad, if you're sitting around drinking beer, telling your buddies you're thinking about breaking up with her, you're thinking about breaking up with her. You're not, this is not the love of your life. It's like if you had a car that you loved and adored, you wouldn't sit, go out and your buddy get drunk talking about selling it. You'd be talking about waxing it. You'd be giving, uh, giving Carrie a, a little armor all. <laughs> you think about that, Chad. I want, Chad, I want you to think about why you're so desperate to get back with someone you were talking about breaking up with. What's that part of you? Why is this, people, why is this people triggering are, people are, are that People are scared you? to death of losing <clears throat> that yeah, idealized I'm, Same other. way. Yeah. Oh, when oh. you were that age, when you were nineteen. Imagine how you clung on to stuff. Oh, you yeah, have was like Velcro. Yeah. Jesus, that carry sounds like a pain in the ass. So, Chad's got his hands full. <laughs> he really does. <laughs> Chad's the artistic type. <laughs> Carrie needs an older guy who's a little bohemian. Chad's a goofball. Wants a Chad's who wants to chug some beers with his buds and then talk smack. <laughs> Chad Chad needs a goofy, good looking chick who's not too bright. Carrie's good looking, but she's a pain in the ass. Thank you. <laughs> All right, ready to move forward? Here? Okay. And, and Carrie's angry. Yeah. Yeah. And it didn't sound like she was just angry at Chad. No. It sounded like she had some general global, angry. Uh, global hostility. Global hostility, yeah. yes. And I could see those two fighting pretty good. Ruben? Yeah, that's me. What's up, man? Hey, you're 25, Peppy. I am. Um, how are you doing? Good. Good. I'm working right now, so uh, if, if there's a little static, then uh, I apologize. What are you doing? Um, I'm driving a taxi right now, and that's that's what my story in question relate to. Yeah, wait, wait a minute. You're not calling from uh, L.A. or New York. No, I'm calling from Palm Springs. Oh, yeah. I land, okay. Yeah, I landed here on Thanksgiving uh, for for uh, for before Thanksgiving with some friends, and I decided to stay on for about six months. Yeah, it's amazing time. because you have almost no accent. From where? Where'd you land from? Okay, this Sorry, this is I'm, that. I'm from New York. Why don't you ask him about that? I'm from Ithaca, New York, to begin with. Okay, hold on a second, though. We've been to Ithaca. Hey, uh, Ruben. Yeah. Let me ask you a quick question about uh, taxi cabs. Yeah, what's is, up? How important is it that they have the goddamn scanner up at 10 when I'm sitting in the back seat and they're not paying any attention to it? Do you know what I'm talking uh, about? Yeah, I know. What's your name, first of all? <laughs> what's my name? Is it Adam? Yes. Adam. Okay, well, um, the importance of having the radio up yeah. It's because if there's an important transmission that comes in from another driver, like, let's say there's a call along the way. Driver down? Yeah. Code 11? Uh, yeah, you know. Anything, sure. You know, like... Yeah, but why Why do... Why do? Couldn't you just have it loud enough so that you could hear it? Because every time I get in a cab, it's like... <laughs> yeah, hey, Bob's going to the airport. Yeah, okay. He says he's staying in a shuttle. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, Rahi, Rahi, out to the airport. Uh, it's your patch out there. They, uh, yeah, they have figured out the, uh, the Caniati residence is out in the airport. No, Daddy's uh, part of the Indian Devonshire. Come on, try it. Well, he gassed it up. He had the wrong edge. And I'm just sitting back there going, doesn't now, always, now I'm driving the cab. doesn't always sound like, though, they're in, they're in like a metal room, you know, a, a, a cave, and they're yeah. standing about six feet away from the microphone yelling at it. Yeah, here's yeah. the thing. I'm the passenger in the cab. I ain't the co-cab pilot. You understand? I feel as if I should be pushing some buttons and flipping some levers at this point. I don't want to be that... Inv I'm not that fascinated by the cab process to be that involved by it. Shut that goddamn scanner down. Or at least turn it down low enough so that only you can hear it. I swear to Christ, I know everything that's going on from the dispatch office every time I get in a cab. And I've, I've driven around the world three times in a cab and I've never had a driver respond to anything that was said. 
If they were getting back to the person and they were getting some useful information, then I wouldn't be as critical of it. But they never ref- they never address it. We just hear it. So turn that thing down. That's what I'm saying. Dude, right on. All right, turn turn it up now, though. Let me hear. Put the phone down there. You want to hear? Yeah. Why don't you uh, hear a shout out from yeah. my dispatcher? Let's here. hear what's I'm going on. The button here, and then you well, can, just uh, turn it up. I want to hear some. I want to hear some right, conversation. Ready? Yeah. Hold on. What's going on here? So one, one, 84, 83 to 84, you want to give a shout out to, what's your name again? Whoever's on the radio. <laughs> <Listen, laughs> you're a big fan of the show, huh, Ruben? Hey, hey Ruben? Yeah, well, no, my dispatcher. Adam and Dr. Drew. There you go. That's yeah, what it sounds like. But they normally they aren't stoners. They're usually some <laughs> weird uh, Johnny Quest uh, uh, nationality. nationality yeah. Hey, hey man, R- Ruben. Like drug test to get this job. Come on, man. Give me some credit. All right. Well, he had one of your buddies urinate in a glass for you. So what is your question? Oh, uh, anyway, um, the story goes like this, and this is true. I'm, I'm three weeks into the job, right? Last week, I'm on my first night alone dispatching, right? And uh, this means I'm the only driver out there. And um, That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. And uh, what happens is that this guy's staring at me through the window of the cab, right? And uh, I think he's weird, but whatever. You know, he's money. So, like, you know... He gets in and he says, take me to San Lorenzo. I don't know where that is yet. So I ask another driver, whatever, and I'll cut to the chase. He, during the ride, he starts, uh, he starts jacking off in the, in the passenger seat, and uh, he's staring at me the entire time. Yeah. Well, that's why you got that plexiglass shield in there, well, right? No, we don't have it, man. We don't have it because this Palm Springs. Oh, I see. I see. I see. That. So he's, like, sitting in the passenger seat, and I'm, and I'm, like, and I'm like, looking at him, and, he's, and like, he sees that, I, that I've noticed. Well, he's in the back seat, right? No, he's in the passenger seat, man. I made the mistake of, like, letting him sit next to me. Oh, my God. Why don't don't you put him on your lap and let him steer? How did he figure you wouldn't notice, by the way? Well, I don't know, man. Like, I I don't think he was trying. I think, like, that was his game, man. You know, he was getting off on it. All right, so so you threw him out of the cab. Well, no, I didn't, like, throw him out right away. I drove drove him back to the place I picked him up from, and... um, you know the fare was seven eighty eight, but like I was like, "Hey man," I was like, "Don't worry about the fare, just get out of the cab." Yeah. And um, what he, he throws a twenty on the seat. All right, fine. And, yeah, uh, it's still stuck to its seat, right? What's that? It's still stuck to the seat. <laughs> yeah, there was a there's a little bit of jizz yes. on there. Oh, oh, fantastic! Nice. All right, Roman. Thanks yeah. for that story. Uh, I don't know what his question was. I I just had to hang up before he asked me who I was <laughs> one more time. How many times? How many? Why are you calling in? Yeah, sure. yeah, I'm looking for uh, yeah, Bob Hope Drive. Yeah, right I'm going to uh, Palm Desert Drive. I got a, got a, got a fair insurance. Oh, it never ends in those cases. It never, ever ends, and they never talk back to them. All right, I got some things I'd like to change. That's all. When you're in charge, you ever, uh, you ever take cabs in New York, and they have those uh, pre-recorded yeah, things in yeah. there. Hello, this is Eartha Kitt. <laughs> you know me as Catwoman. <laughs> it's like, yeah. So put your seatbelt on. And I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, Eartha Kitt. Yeah, Eartha Kitt oh, and, sure. And taxi character. Yeah, Catwoman. I, I, you know, when I think of Catwoman, I think passive restraint. That's what I think. I think airbags, the shoulder harnesses, side impact beams. I think about automotive safety. I've always had. Because that was one of her sidelines in Batman. She uh, not only played Catwoman, but I think she uh, worked for the GM company doing the safety Judd, testing. Judd Hirsch is the other one, right? Judd Hirsch, yeah. <laughs> all right, you guys got to go to New York and get in a cab and uh, listen to all the uh, half-baked celebrities. You know you, you're, you, you've bottomed out as a celebrity when you're doing uh, pre-recorded cab messages for the city of New York about putting your belt on. Nice. And by the way, I've never put a belt on in one of those cabs. We will uh, take a break. We'll be back. She oh, just screw. We almost got through that bag of popcorn in the break. Time for another one. We shouldn't have talked. <laughs> <laughs> I think we both could have uh, squeezed in another uh, 18 to 25 kernels had we not had that sort of chatter and in breathing. between. Yeah. No more. Okay. Mental note. No breathing while I'm eating. Eric? Uh, yeah. You're 17. Yeah. What's up? How's it going? Um, well, I have a problem. Basically, every time I have sex with my girlfriend, um, we've been having sex for about three months now. And basically, I just, I can't, I keep coming after about three minutes. 
and nothing has changed. Like, every single time, it seems like. Can you do a second round here? Yeah, and I don't know. I, I don't know what's going on. It just, like, I've What happened the second time around? Uh, basically, I don't know. It, it's basically the same, a little bit longer, but it's the same idea. I don't know what to do. How about another time around? Uh, kind of painful after that. But, I mean, I, I've listened to you guys, your show a lot, and basically I've heard you guys talk about um, how after a while it you can build up a tolerance maybe or something, but that just it never happened to me. At 17, it's tough. <laughs> you mean to sex? Yeah. 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 You're screwed. No. Huh? That, I mean, it comes well, real fast, right? He'll figure right? it out. He'll figure it he, out. You, you, well, I, don't, I never said you could build up a tolerance. Well, you I mean you always tell people that... Well, like, not a tolerance, but it, it gets easier to go longer. As right, to masturbate long. beforehand. Well, and... you just don't care. Uh. At 17, every, you think potentially you're going to be the world's greatest lover, and then you realize you suck. Do you have a girlfriend? Yeah. Is uh, she a steady? Been been that way for a while? Yeah, it's, uh, seven months. Seven months. Yeah, pretty kind of long, I think. Yeah, that's, uh, that's six years when you're my age. So, uh, listen, Eric... Is she cool? I mean, can you talk about this stuff? Yeah. All right. You, you see, you sound fairly adjusted. You fa you sound like you, you know, get your feet on the ground. You communicate with her. You guys have a decent relationship. It's just the kind of thing you just work out. Mm -hmm. it, it, there's, Is she there's, upset by him? No, I mean... Yeah, no magic you, you'll answer. Work this out. You'll work this out. Yeah, yeah I mean, how about uh, some of that dong-numbing cream you <laughs> order in the back of the Hustler no, no, magazine? No, 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 no. <laughs> Wisdom of the Orient brought to the States... Mm -hmm. Sounds like a good plan. Yeah. You can't rub a little Coke on your uh, dork before you get it on? Yeah, that could work. No, come on. No. How about a little... Hey, Drew? Mm. Seriously. How about a little, like, Preparation H? No. How about something that numbs a little bit? I, uh, there, there's what some very powerful it? numbing agents out there, but... Not, yeah, not, what about it? I'm not... I'm numbing that dork a little bit. an interesting idea, but I don't Numb think... Numb down. What about it? It's not going to hurt you. I mean, hell, if you can rub a tube of it on your ass, certainly put a little dollop on the joint... Yeah, but I don't know that it would make a difference. I mean, think it's a spinal reflex. I mean, think about... On the other hand, she may not have a bunch of ass cream up her. Mm, that's true. She gets numb, too. <laughs> oh, interesting. Hey, uh, Eric? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I think I'm coming on to something with this preparation put a, put, age. Put a condom on over the lidocaine jelly? Ooh. Do you wear a condom? Yeah. Hey, Eric? Mm -hmm. Do me a favor. Mm -hmm. Now, what is a numbing agent, Drew? Xylocaine. What, what, xylocaine. xylocaine? Yeah. What would you use that for? Like gum, I mean gum up and things. Yeah, but that, yeah, that that might be a little tough on the on the uh, sensitive skin down there that covers the Johnson. How about a what about a little preparation age? What does that do? You're, you're hell bent on that. Yeah, I like the ice cream. Well, it's, it's the same region. Does that numb you? Would I, that I numb you? I, I don't what think does preparation so. age do? What is what, shrinks what, inflamed tissues? What is that? What hemorrhoid cream does? Yeah. So what would have some numbing? So some of that like aura gel, you yeah. know, something like that would have like a numbing effect. Yeah. Now, obviously, if you're sh you're slapping it inside your mouth, that ain't going to hurt you. Uh, what's the xylocaine jelly again? Hey, uh, Eric. Yeah. Go down to the drugstore. Mm -hmm. I, by the way, I'm I'm not recommending. Drew this. does not endorse this, and I'm not a doctor, but I got a gut feeling about this one. Oh, okay. Grab just a little bit of that uh, or gel. Just a little little uh, little dab of that. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Stuff you put on your wisdom tooth when it hurts. Right. Spread just a, just a little dollop of that on the dork, mm -hmm. and then put the condom over that. Okay. Now, don't get any on the outside of the condom. Keep it on the inside. All right. Now, you think that will eat away the condom? Mm. I mean, you get the urethritis, so that'll be nice. Oh, really? You, you don't think that'll work? Eh, Drew, Drew, actually, Drew does think it'll work. <laughs> put, a little, put a little on the Johnson and see what it does. Okay. All right. All right, thanks. All right, good times, buddy. Yeah, you too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah. Enjoy. You numb that penis, <laughs> you get an extra couple strokes out of it. Huh? That's good times, right? Yeah. I think I'm on to something. I think you get some of that for myself. Mikey? Yeah. Are you Mickey or Mikey? Mikey. What's up there, Mikey? Well, first I wanted to know if TV Guide was right in saying that you were resigning from Loveline. Um, I, I don't... You mean that, that article that was yeah. on, on Jimmy? Yeah, Jimmy Kimmel? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Did did it say I was resigning from Loveline? Yeah, it said you'd already left Loveline. Hmm. Huh. Well, maybe they're talking about the TV show. Yeah, well, that's what I thought, but it didn't say anything about Drew. It just said yeah. about you. Well, they, America doesn't know Drew's name, so it would be confusing to them. 
<laughs> and the, the, uh, the long-winded explanation would take up too much, too many words on the page. Okay. No, I'm here. I'm, I'm completely Everyone committed. knows that I was my sidekick. So. I'm completely yeah. committed to this show, at least for another 30 seconds, so hurry. Okay, the other thing I wanted to talk about is that girl, Michelle, who called earlier. Yes. And I wanted to say that it, she really needs to get help now. Because almost the same thing happened to me. I was sexually abused from the time I was six. And I went to a therapist finally in, when I was 23. But I had to leave him after nine months. And um, he then maintained the relationship with me as a daddy. Yeah. And he physically and sexually abused me for over two years. It's amazing the way we find those people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. Hey, hey, uh, yeah. Mikey, hey, yeah. uh, unfortunately we're out of time. Uh, I'm sorry about that. I really am. Okay. And I, I hope you're doing okay now. Well, I am, and I just wanted to say that she needs to get help now so she doesn't go through the garbage I went through. Yes, and I'm and I'm glad. Uh, That's a great message. I'm glad you called up and sent that message. And I guess the more important message was don't find a therapist. He's going <laughs> to call you. He, he, you're going to call him daddy, and he's going to continue raping it. Recommended was, by somebody. Was that her message? Legitimate. Uh. All right, we'll be back. Well, there you have it. Another fabulous episode of Love Line. In the can, as we call it. Tomorrow night, Crazy Town will uh, be in here. And until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Love Line is Ann Wilkins Engel. Love Line is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.